we are live yes now we are <laughs> it always takes a second for me to catch up with with being live and and or not <laughs> okay great we're just gonna wait for one or two minutes so a few people can come into the room there was an announcement so a few people might join us how how are you doing so long um i'm very fine uh <laughs> it's pretty hot uh recently so i'm sweating i'm sitting here in my half office and i'm sweating now um so i would prefer to be outside actually but it's <laughs> <laughs> that's nice we've had like the coldest summer in years here in south africa really? we just just okay. it's just been well i'm in johannesburg and it's just been raining which is um, good because because we have very low water levels in all the dams yeah. so now yeah. everything's full more than full. Yeah, okay yeah that's good yeah we have these problems here as well always um that our water bassins are not really filling up anymore and that there's too much use of water and oh my god yeah mm. yeah Definitely, you have to say that climate change is real. <laughs> uh, yes, definitely. And you can feel the change of the of the seasons. You seasons know, like the yeah. summer is coming much later than it was all the years before, and the water temperature is still not there where it should be. And um, also, the winter was pretty cold. And yeah, there's lots of changes. It's true. Under the water, you can see this as well. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I see we have a few people in the room. So hello and welcome everyone to another edition of our Pro Talks. Today I have a very special guest with me. This is Katharina. Katharina is a dive center owner, a training center owner in Mauritius. And today she will tell us a lot about uh, her life as an, instructor, as an instructor, instructor trainer, and also as a training center owner. So that's our topic for today. Uh, as you all know, We've already had one talk last week. We are really concentrating on trying to show you the different career options that you have as an instructor. Um, that's why we really want to motivate you out there to maybe think about becoming an instructor, doing your dive training. If you are interested, obviously you can go on our website. You can speak to Katarina directly if you're interested in Mauritius. Uh, and we're really excited to push uh, more pro certifications in 2022. Dive centers worldwide are desperately looking for instructors. So there is a lot of chances out there. So um, without further ado, uh, welcome Katharina. Hi, thanks for inviting me. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, for everyone out there, if you have any questions to Katharina, you can ask them in the comments right away. I might just ask them to Katharina live. If we don't catch any of your questions or if you have questions when watching it in the replay, then you can still put them in the comments. We will revisit the comments in the next few days to make sure that all your questions have been answered. Okay, Katharina, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Okay, um, my name is Katharina Doman. I'm... Um, originally German, as you might hear with my accent. Um, I came to Mauritius in 2006 and opened my dive center. And uh, well, I grew up on an island in Germany. So I think water was always my element. Uh, so it was just a question of time that I like switched the islands. something. Like <laughs> to a bit of a warmer island with a little bit warmer water, I guess. <laughs> Away from the North Sea and then coming to the Indian Ocean was uh, a big change, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a good one, though. I definitely, I would definitely be up for that change. Yeah. Um, that's really amazing. So you own a dive center, you just said. So mm -hmm. I want to learn a little bit more about your career in diving and how it came to the spot of you having mm -hmm. a dive shop. So have you worked as instructor? Have you visited different countries with it? How did your career path? work in it um i was a holiday diver so i made my licenses um during holidays and um well like i said water was always my element and every kind of water sports was always what i love to do i'm not the person which like to stay like sitting or laying in the sun on the beach and getting sunburned so um, I was more the one being underneath the water and feeling free and happy so I made um, I started diving with with CMAS made my uh, way made it up 
to the um, four star level. And um, then I changed to Paddy and made my instructor. Um, and well, actually, I, I was like normally based in Germany, so I was pretty settled. I um, just got my second daughter and um, I had a pretty normal life, I would say, so very organized. Um, and um, at some point I was just like getting a little bit fed up with and exhausted with working and everything. And then I thought like, okay, maybe it's now the right time before you, um, before the girls are starting to go to school and all these things to just like make actually use of this instructor license and just like explore a little bit and get out for like maybe one year because afterwards once the, the kids are settled in school and everything you won't leave anymore and um, well yeah then I already visited Mauritius before and I knew some places and diving center here and then I asked for a job and was okay and then I said okay I'm not really earning much so maybe that's not so cool and then I was thinking about okay how about opening my own diving center and being my own boss you know like not um, working for someone else because I knew that I'm a good worker um, so I thought okay maybe you just try this and it was like a little bit naive I think and I did not really actually believed um, looking backwards that this really what happened so I started slowly to get all the licenses which I needed and everything and then at one point I, I just had everything I needed and then there was this thing like okay now well either I do this now or I don't and then I was like okay you can't really lose anything it's maybe like a little bit money you're losing but I did not invest it much at the beginning I did not took a loan or anything um, and well I definitely gained lots of life experience and um yeah, and then I just did it. So I, I bought, I think, six tanks. I had two 10 liter and four 12 liter tanks. I think I bought five racks. I had a little garage, which I rented. I rented a boat. I found my first skipper, which I directly fired again. <laughs> so it, it just started, you know. So, and um, then um, I think this is a, this one of these things um, which are typical German. We are very organized and we, also know like basic um, mathematics so like if you just earn two you can't spend five <laughs> and um, this is pretty much what I did and then like everything I earned in the first few months I just um, invested again and then after some time I was able to get a boat and um, so like I think after four or five months I had enough money to buy a boat and then I bought the first engine and then I was able to buy the second engine and it just like from there on it just like worked somehow and um, yeah and until now I'm not bankrupt I think this is the reason <laughs> I'm still here so I never really made the decision that I ever stay you know or that I'm leaving Germany or somehow it was just like life just happened and I also have to say I never worked as an instructor before so I really directly started um, with my own business and um, learn through experience. I think this is a really cool point <laughs> you're making because I know there's a lot of instructors out there and I know opening a dive center is just a very intimidating step to so many people because, you know, there's so many things you need. Um, there's licenses, like you said, all the permits and everything, but then also tanks, equipment and all of these things. And it can be a very big step, but you don't have to start with a 5,000 square meter shop <laughs> with your own you pool, you with can't. two compressors and a membrane yeah. and all of that stuff. Oh, you and don't like, have to. You can start small. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Just start small and like, just like be willing to do really everything. And if you figure then out at some point you're unable to do one or two things and you just outsource this and for me it was like okay I'm, I'm doing everything so I was a one man show or one woman show at the beginning so I just did everything I just had a skipper and um, and that's it but I also made my skipper license and then of course um, I always thought it's really really important that you never stop educating yourself you know like you never stop learning so I just like um, I okay I was already petty instructors and I became two star instructors and then three star 
deconstruct those themas and then um, like more than 10 years ago, I crossed over to SSI and with SSI then I made the instructor trainer and then I got into technical diving and made the instructor trainer for technical diving as well. So until now, I never really stopped learning and I never really stopped um, as well to um, took the diving center with me, you know, so there was lots of changes in the diving center as well. And I think this is one thing you need to keep in mind that um, when you start being your own boss, you need to understand that it's not a, I don't know, a to four job, you know, it's like <laughs> six, seven days. Well, I'm, I'm working seven days a week, you know, so I, I, I love my job. Otherwise I wouldn't do this. So, and it's pretty intense, especially at the beginning and you, yeah, mm. you need to put your complete insight in it. <laughs> That's the thing with the business owner, right? There is the saying yeah. that is uh, having, being self-employed lets you step away from the nine to five into a 24 seven job. Yeah. I got Definitely. the idea, you know, I, I, I leave Germany to have actually a little bit more time for my daughters. And then I ended up with like, not really having time for my daughters anymore. But here I had the class that school here for kids starts at four. And you have the, um, the, the day school, you know, so like, okay, perfect. I'm out, you know, so doesn't really sound nice. And it was still a good mother, but um, it, it helped a lot, you know, so it really, really helped a lot. And um, yeah, and then I think you also need to be able to go with the flow, you know, like I was lucky that um, when I started here, most of the diving centers here in Mauritius, they did not even have a website. So I directly started having a website, obviously, which is nowadays not that important anymore. And um, then I was maybe also lucky that I speak German because we have lots of German speaking um, tourists here. So and yeah, I never thought that it would be so important, but it was then for most of the divers important to have someone which is speaking German and this helped a lot so I was also really really lucky um, yeah mm, yeah I agree languages is probably for all instructors out there and I remember I remember any job post even any job post that we still have now languages are very often some of the biggest biggest yeah. parts a lot of people when they come on holiday they don't want to concentrate and they don't want to like make their brain work to switch languages so yeah. they wanna they enjoy speaking in their own language so yeah. it's very important i i 100 agree that's, that's you really have all the teaching on training material anyway in all the languages but it's just like diving is so intense and you need to um be able to have a um i don't know um uh a connection with your customer oh, yeah, you yeah. Need to be able to build up a connection really really quickly and of course that's easier in your own language you know and mm -hmm. well i'm also not very talented in, in other languages so i'm really still struggling <laughs> with english and french and creole and everything um so i absolutely understand that people prefer to get trained in their mm. mother tongue yeah, it feels it feels more familiar. So, I mean, you touched onto this a little bit, but how did you end up in Mauritius? Why why Mauritius? Mm -hmm. I think, um, well, especially like this time ago, like uh, there was lots of changes for women. I think it's getting a little bit easier, but like 15, 20 years ago, it was definitely more difficult. So there was never an option for me to consider any um, Arabian country, for example, um, or I'm also not the person which likes Indonesia so much. So it's like the culture is so different that I would have problems um, uh, to, to live there for, for really long. And uh, Mauritius is pretty European and um, well, it's the Indian Ocean. I, I love the Indian Ocean. I think it's the best ocean. Um, and um, yeah, and well, of course, I needed to have certain facilities for my girls because I was already a mom. I was yeah a single mom. So I needed to make sure that there's good schools, there's uh, good hospitals um, and all these things. And um, also a community um, of um, foreigners um so that you're not so obviously a foreigner you know so that they won't just feel like um they don't belong here yeah. um 
and yeah, there Mauritius was, um, I think, the best choice for me. Yeah, mm. and and I mean, it's very be beautiful. Like Mauritius, <laughs> Mauritius is probably one of my favorite destinations I've been to in the world. It's oh really, gosh. really nice. Yeah, <laughs> happy to hear this. <laughs> um so it's, really, it's easy it's especially sorry i, I no, need no. to say it. especially for women you know it's um um it's you can just go out without like being talked to permanently or like mm -hmm. you you never feel um harassed in any way you know it's so it's yeah. really you can do whatever you want and I don't know how many nights I spent for example in the harbor because there was uh, like high waves announced and I spent my night there to just overwatch my boat if everything is come uh, still okay when the high tide is popping in and um, I never had problems you know so I never really had any difficult situation or maybe mm. I had but I don't remember but <laughs> it was, Mauritians yeah. are very very warm and very very friendly and um yeah so it that's was amazing right so so that actually brings me to my next question what would you consider the best part about Mauritius um well okay friendly people definitely um also changing of course because more tourists more money and all these things yes but um, definitely still very, very friendly people, very welcoming. And um, wow, the Indian Ocean. I, mm. I love the Indian Ocean. I, um, yeah, it's, it's just my water. I really yeah. like it. Well, I'm also fascinated by ice and like all these other things, but like for the daily thing, um, the Indian Ocean is perfect. I love to go diving in shorts and a rush guard and I can't imagine myself like, wearing every day a seven millimeter or something like this you know i mm. think south africa is also beautiful but just the point that you always need to have a thick wetsuit oh god and this like every day oh no thank mm. you so i'm yeah. even in winter i'm just diving in my shorts and i left loves the feeling of the water on my skin and all these things so yeah it's um the indian, the indian ocean is really cool because I think the best part of the Indian Ocean for me is if you compare it to the Red Sea, which is also amazing and beautiful, yeah, and or, or like the Mediterranean, all the other seas, it's like yeah. you never know what you can or what you can meet, what you can get. Mm -hmm. There might exactly. just be a whale swimming past because yeah, yeah, exactly. it's exactly. the Indian Ocean. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. We have everything and you never know what will pop up during a dive you're doing you know so like I don't know how often I did the dive sites um, I'm doing here and it's like every day different and I'm still like when we see dolphins or whales or whatever on the surface I'm still the one jumping up and down on the boat and being like super excited um yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool um so tell us a little bit more about your dive shop okay um well, what do you want to do? So um, I founded the dive shot, or I got all the papers finalized then in April 2006. Um, and like I said, I started in a tiny little garage and then um, I moved after, I think, two years, about two years into a little bit bigger um, place. And then I think four years, five years ago, I moved again. So I already moved three times an entire diving center, which is... Oh, lots to do um yeah but it was always just across the street so it was okay and um mm, yeah so it's my baby you know so like I I think I know everything in it around the diving center I know every wreck I know every tank I know um my compressor very well I know my boat uh, so I know each part of equipment um yeah and um I think what is special about the diving center is that um, once I started working in the industry um, and started to have clients um, which are coming to the shop, it was mostly, okay, lots of German speaking, like I said, and mostly um, uh, like couples because uh, Mauritius is not really perfect uh, honeymoon destination <laughs> ah, so, exactly so couples came in and then it was most yeah it was always that the guy was uh, diving and most probably already since years and the wife maybe tried it a couple of years ago considered it like no it's too much 
I don't know, equipment, it's too technical and whatever. And then uh, she decided to not dive and that it was always just him coming to dive and she was just waiting. And um, I did not like this. For me, it's really like I'm so excited about diving and I love it so much that I always just wanted to to show and present it to other people. And um, yeah, and as, yeah, I think I, at one point I just made it my mission to especially educate women. Um, yeah, and having this actually life-changing impact on them, you know, like I had the key to open an entire new world for them and the rewards I got out of this was just like overwhelming always, you know, so, um, and I think, yeah, this was then so my my mission for my life somehow. Can you say it's maybe too big? <laughs> <laughs> really, like I I really spent lots of um, passion to educate um, women and kids. Um, yeah. To to present them the ocean and the creatures, and uh, yeah, I still love doing this a lot. And then, of course, at some point, I also decided that um, it's much easier to show women that diving is something for women as well if I just employ women. So I usually um, just employ women. So I, yeah, I, I like women. No, let's put it this way: women have better chances to get a job in our diving centers than men, which is a little bit sexist. I know this, but yes, guys, we are living this way in hundreds of years. <laughs> so. In my diving center, I made my world. Maybe it's not very nice. I know, but it's like this. But, so, but it's your it's your own choice, and I think it's great. I, that that was actually one thing I, I would, yeah I really want to discuss with you because um, the first time I actually came to a dive shop, I, I I came as we maybe already established, and it was really cool to me to see this like all girl power dive shop, which was really cool because. Um, like you, I've also, I mean, I've, like your daughters, I've actually grown up around a dive center. And this was very, like, that was my life. Back in the days, I mean, back in the days, it's been 20 years. Um, it was a very, very male dominant sport. Yeah. And I think it's so cool through people like you and through a lot of empowerment in general, the numbers of females to males have changed so much. You can see actively in dive centers now so many females so many uh women of and so many people of all genders really Young coming women. and being being like diving together enjoying it together mm -hmm. and not just being that sport for the the uh, regular yeah. male customer that it used to be so it's really cool how the industry has changed already yeah. and I think it's a lot because of people like you and people taking, hope trying so. to take in initiatives. Yeah. I think that's really cool. I hope we have an impact on all these things. So I see the change already in the last years as well. So you have like um, younger couples, it's always both of them which are diving. It's not only the guy which is starting to dive with me, it's definitely also the women. And I also have um, women choosing our diving center um, because they they read about um, the way I think about diving centers and men in the same way actually and um, it's still I think not really well balanced if it comes to my age and older so there are still lots of women which we need to get and I think it's also missing lots of diversity because it's still a pretty um, I don't know how to say this nicely, a pretty white dominated um, sport. So I don't yeah, really see lots is. of Arabian women diving or stuff like this. So I think it's really, there need to be more diversity. We need to push all these buttons so that it's like, um, that the access to diving is, is easier for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. And um, well, I hope that um, we're going to achieve this as well in the next years. 100%. Yeah. And I think, I think another big part is I know you're very, very active on social media and your social media is really amazing. And I think it's a big part because representation on social media, you as a woman or people of color and all of these things yeah. 
it is a really important step that we all have to take. And we're really trying to include and increase and try to show off more. And yeah, it's really important. And I'm excited for the future of this. And I, I know because we had these conversations when I was there, right? So our mindsets are very similar in this sense. So it was really exciting to, to share uh, ideas and all of that. I really enjoyed that. It's a, the, the beauty of social media is really that everybody is getting a voice and that you can, uh, that you can actively um, take part of everything. There's also lots of negative sides um, of social of media. <laughs> no question about it. But the beauty is really that everybody is having a voice and that you can um, point out things which are just not right. And um, there are so many things, um, like just for if you look at the sharks, you know, the sharks actually start to become, uh, to, to get a voice, you know, like people mm. start caring about sharks. And we never had this all the years before, but this, and this is def definitely um, due to several social media um, campaigns. The same for the climate. Um, something is happening there and it's like, I don't know, cooking underneath the surface. And it's this is really, really nice to, to see. And um, I think social media is a, a huge part of, of our daily life now. Um, mm. And it doesn't matter if we like it or not, we, we have to make use of it. Definitely. And go, everybody out there, go check out uh, Kat on, on uh, the mm -hmm. socials, her Instagram, see her Chindisin Mauritius. It's a really cool page. It really... Actually, I have to say, it's annoying when you sit at home and you just get all these cool stories of them diving, beautiful, <laughs> seeing eagle rays and all these amazing things all the time. But it's definitely something you guys should check out. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's, I'm sometimes a little bit lazy, so I should like definitely post even more. Um, but like there's so much to do around so um yeah but i also i i enjoy it as well so i have fun doing this yeah so tell us about the typical day in your life like what does it look like how does it how you like your work as a dive center owner what do you do mm -hmm. so as a dive center is open um, from mondays to saturday we are closed on sundays so today is my day off actually um yeah, I got up in the morning at like 5.15, 5.30, then I have my coffee. <laughs> Without coffee, I'm not functioning. And um, I think then I already start taking my phone and either open my laptop in the same time and check on emails or I check emails on my phone. And um, then I think I already released my first post on uh, the daily story for the diving center um, saying like, where what's up for today? It's my, my daily post. So where I just like describe which dive sites we are doing or which courses we are doing at the moment or just stuff like this. Um, I'm leaving my house at around six, 6.15, something like this. Then I arrive in the diving center, like, I don't know, quarter past six or 6.30, something. Yeah, I open the dive center. And the first thing to do is always that I start the aircom in, air uh, in the uh, compressor room. So, and then I start the compressor and uh, either top up the tanks or I need to fill some more tanks. So this is like the first thing to do. And then I check our bookings and see like how many tanks I need. Um, and um, yeah, so meanwhile, my daughter, because she's working at the moment with me, my, my younger one, um, she's like setting up the diving center, you know, like, I don't know, putting the sitting area outside and uh, heating some water for coffee and uh, yeah, just opening the toilets and uh, preparing the outside area, whatever. And then as from 7.45, the first clients are coming, um, if they are doing refreshers or if they start um, diving, then I start with them at 7.45 and um, other people are popping in around 8.15, 8.30. Um, then I have one office girl, which is coming as well, so like 8.30ish and she and me and Kalea, we all help the divers then to get them um, equipped and everything. And yeah, depending on the people, if they're on time, and we, we leave the center 
between 8.30 and 9. So I always try to be really, really early because most other diving centers um, are on the boat at 9 and I prefer to be like on the boat already at 8.30 so that I hit the water long before the others are coming. I, I don't like to see other diving or No, I don't like to see other diving centers is wrong. I don't like to meet other people under the water. So I prefer <laughs> to be there on my own. Um, yeah, and then we do the first dive. And at the moment, um, since COVID, we, are, we decided to do two tank dives because I don't have so many employees anymore. So before we had three dives a day. Now at the moment, we do two tank dives. So we get out in the morning, do our two dives, and then we are coming back latest at 12. And um, well, then it's filling in the logbooks, um, doing courses, um, paperwork, stuff like this. And um, then I'm going home and then it's a computer. So like, I don't know, I check the pictures which I take underwater, then I do social media things, I answer my emails. And then, well, nowadays with social media, you have so many different channels that you have like, I, I think I need, I have to check like six different channels to see if there's bookings coming in or not. And um, yeah, and this just keeps me busy then until the rest of the day somehow. Definitely sounds busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> No, I mean, that, but that's really cool. What I really like about this is you showcase how uh, a dive center owner, being a dive center owner is not a job where you will go and sit in your office all day and you definitely oh. hands on you and Wait, you have to sure. understand and you do everything in the dive shop. For sure, this is existing as well, but um, I'm not a person which likes this. So I'm also doing all the dives myself. And also before, when we still did three dives, it was always me diving the most. Um, so I never ask any employee to, to do actually more, more than I was willing to do myself. I don't like this. And um, the diving part is, is still the, the part which I love the most. It's, um, yeah, it's my daily dose of happiness i would say something like this <laughs> and it's amazing that you can still enjoy diving so much after all these years and enjoy yeah. it in the same places yeah. because the ocean's just so beautiful i mean yeah yeah you should see not me the like, same. it's never the same something under the water i'm the one like oh my gosh oh my god look what we see there and uh, yeah <laughs> my daughters are always embarrassed about me <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so tell me a little bit more. What are what are like difficulties you have as a dive shop owner? Not even difficulties. What are like some hurdles or the parts of the job that you enjoy the least? Let's call it like that. <laughs> um, well, I think everybody is expecting now doing the accounts, um, which is true. Yes, accounting. Um, <laughs> but on the other side, I also like no, but I also like it. I have to admit, I like I like numbers and I like tables um, I'm, I'm super organized so I, I actually like this uh, very structural work um, not always so it also like I need to force me to do these things um, but then I'm doing it um, yeah I don't know what kind uh, maybe repairing equipment but even this I like sometimes I think <laughs> very it's very sad for me so, it's, it's like this thing where you take equipment apart and clean it and yeah. put it back together for me it's like meditation <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah. it's like it, you just it's something yeah where you're organized again and always when I'm organized I'm doing an all very organized thing then I'm actually really happy and um yeah I don't know um, I think I, maybe it's really social media um because um it takes a lot out of you so I'm not really someone which is like very um open about myself you know like I'm yeah. not really so like I don't really talk about myself um so much um I love talking about diving but I think social media is always something which need to be personal so I'm not really that good in this and I wish I would be better um and I'm also a pretty much a perfectionist which is a huge <laughs> obstacle actually because media, just yeah. because things are not per uh, perfect I'm not doing them then you know so it, I wish I would be more like okay I just do it anyway and um, that would make my life easier I think so yeah. um, but elsewise there is nothing I 
well, I don't like to go to Port Louis when I have like when I need to pay licenses and stuff like this. So like, oh God, I hate this. Yes, I see bills. I see. <laughs> so I don't like these things, which I just have to do. I don't know, not that often, but like this typical owner or manager things. Um, yeah. I don't like it. Um, yeah, of, of course, when there's something you're not really happy with, when you have this very serious conversation with your employees. So, and then I'm always like, oh my gosh, okay, but you have to do it. So um, yeah. I don't like this very much. I'm always, I'm scared that I hurt people. So I don't like to, to yeah. Mm. Age-wise, I, I don't know, maybe I forgot something, but no, I don't think that there's really something <laughs> which I don't like. Yeah, so there is really not not so not really anything too bad about it. So, what is the best part about it, though? What is your favorite part about being a dive shop owner? Oh, part. I was I was really thinking about this, and I think I can't answer this question because it's like so many different things. So, I like to be my own boss. Um, I like to have responsibility. Um, I like to be. I like that I am responsible for the decisions I'm, I'm, I'm do, uh, taking and I, I'm also absolutely okay to, to learn when I, when I decide wrong, you know, so like to learn from my mistakes. Um, I love the teaching part. I think this is the most rewarding um, thing in it. Um, I love that I can, that I'm a, like a content creator on social media, like an ocean content creator. This, I think it's really cool and really important. Um, divers and surfers and whatever we i think we have a very important rule if it comes to protect the ocean and i i love this part i love taking pictures or movies and um well diving of course like the actual diving is definitely the best out of it um it's my daily meditation which i i need so i can't really imagine a life without diving so um I, I'm a bit scared of getting COVID so that maybe my lungs <laughs> will have problems afterwards and that I can't dive anymore. So, you know, so this is the only thing yeah. um, I'm boosted in everything um, because I don't want to have anything going on with my lungs and that I won't be yeah. able to dive afterwards. I don't know what to do then. It's, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, not thinking about it. <laughs> yes, uh, th let's not put this out in the universe. We <laughs> no, 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 no. Just, we just leave it. We, we just leave it there. No, I'm, yeah, I love diving. I love to interact with um, the creatures under the water. Um, I, I think um, that like the way I'm recognizing, for example, turtles or big moray eels or even eagle rays or whatever, I believe that they recognize me as well. Maybe stupid, but like, yeah. Um, I feel connected always. And I think this is this, this special thrill um, you're having. And I don't know, maybe like the rangers in, um, in your game resorts, um, they have the same effect, you know, because you're in the wild, there's always something unpredictable and you're like, it's just pure nature and you can't. Yeah it's oh my gosh yeah it's perfect it's good and gosh, and being there and feeling as part of it is just it's just very special i actually have a question here from eugene and he's asking mm -hmm. what adv advice would you give for somebody who's uh thinking about starting out as a dive shop owner or starting to or like arranging their own dive shop um well Yeah, I think there are lots of different things. So first of all, um, don't take a loan. I think that's because this is too much pressure, you know, like use the, the funds you're having and try to invest what you're actually earning. Um, taking a loan is putting, oh, it's a cat, sorry. It's putting too much pressure then, you know, and then you're just like, ah, oh, yeah, it, you won't be able to enjoy it. Um, and then just start small, you know, and try to... Um, figure out early enough where you want to start your diving center and if this is really a good area and if you have clients or not and um, um, as well be aware of your personal strengths so like you should definitely know who you are and what you are capable of so if you are know about yourself that you um, 
don't like people um, or that you're a bit lazy or whatever, then maybe it's not a good idea, you know? So it's really like you need to, um, yeah, it's it's okay. Like everybody's having our strengths and our weaknesses, but you should be aware of these, I think. Um, and then, well, just start, you know? Like even if it's not turning out to be like the way you expected it, life is never turning out this way, you know? Like, I don't know. I don't think when I started studying, my parents expected me to end up on an island uh, very far away from them. So life is never um, as we planned. And um, just like um, try and learn from the mistakes you're doing, because there will be lots of lessons. And you will also lose money and you will have people which are not happy with you and all these things. But for all these things, it's important that you know who you are. It's very, very this- good advice. <laughs> I have to say, (laughs) I think that was great advice. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that's, that's very true and amazing. So really just start and try and things will generate most of the times, even if things look very dire at the moment, they will generally fall into place somehow. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's something I've learned from my last many years of life. Every time I feel like, oh no, the world is ending. (laughs) Yeah, Just don't forget to get up in the morning, you know, like, I don't know, get up fresh and just start over again, you know, like, and it's absolutely fine to do mistakes. I think this is also something like, forgive yourself um, for everything, maybe which was not working well, you know, because you did not know better or however. And, um, but don't forget to learn um, out of these lessons. So I also have lots of, Yes. One thing, one thing you probably, that is a very good point you're making. One thing you have to do when starting your own dive shop is you probably have to put your own ego aside Yeah. and you have to learn, accept and understand. And if you do it in a different country, you also have to accept the culture there and work with the local culture and don't work against that because that will usually end. It's not helpful. It's it's not not helpful. helpful. That's true. Yeah. And I think as an instructor, it's very important that you are empathic, you know, like um, there are lots of different reasons for people why they maybe can't clean their mask. And um, you need to always be able to find a way um, to still train them, you know, so like, and empathy is definitely something which is helping you um, and also as a, when you run a diving center, it's the same. So like yeah. always try to put yourself in the shoes of someone else. That's, that's, that's a, like I said, very, very good advice. Um, then I have one more topic I want to discuss a little bit. And that has also to do with my next question. It's like, um, you told me earlier that you do XR. I mean, you've, you said you never stop educating yourself. I think a very important topic these days for dive centers is that you don't just go for only scuba diving and Mm -hmm. nothing else. Like, I believe opening your horizon a little bit, offer different types of activities, offer different type of types of experiences is something really important. How do you, how do you feel about this? Same, definitely. Um, And I think that's, um, you know, it's depending on where your your dive shop shop is based, for example. So like, And with SSI, you have all these opportunity of different things. So you can have a a swimming school next to a dive shop. Then you can teach technical diving. Um, And well, of course, you have mermaid as well. You have free diving. So you have lots of different things. And you just need to figure out which is your way to go, you know. And um, well, for me, I'm diving every day. So it's not very healthy for me to get myself into free diving but maybe this is something for the future at the moment we also don't really have the clients um, which would be interested in in free diving so that it would be worse for me to um, employ a free diving instructor but maybe this is something in the future so you like be aware that these things are existing and be open as well to all these things and figure out where your dive center is based blah, 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 and just check what people there want. So you get lots of clients if you're going into schools and if you start teaching them swimming because you have a swimming school. 
um, next to your diving center. And this is how you can um, accommodate then more clients into scuba diving as well. And um, it, this is really cool. Well, we are allowed to make advertisement for SSI, isn't it? Of course, so, we are. Really like SSI is giving you all the tools. You just need to use them. And um, it's, it's actually lots of tools. And um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have another audience question here from Ben Dixon, who said he was one of your students and absolutely loves and adores you. Uh, he, he asks, how did you get so good at public speaking? Oh, my God. Oh, no, he's <laughs> just doing this to annoy me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, yeah, Ben is one of my instructor students, and I think I trained lots of levels with him, and he's actually having now his own diving center in Geneva. So, um, yeah, and he's my little Padawan, and I'm really, really proud because uh, he is really, really good in what he's doing. And he, for example, um, also um, figured out his area, what is needed there. So instead of like bringing people for diving, he's teaching lots of referrals. So he's like doing all the theory part and he's doing the pool things. And then afterwards, he's sending people abroad. And um, he's very, very good in all these ecology things. So he's teaching lots of ecology courses. So it's really like everybody need to figure out where your personal strengths and um, what is most needed in your area. And then, like I said, you got all the tools from SSI. You just need to use them. Yeah. Twice. One really nice message I take out of what you just said is it's super important with other dive centers to work together and not against uh, each other. Um, yeah, definitely. If, especially with dive centers overseas, it, other yeah. training centers and other everybody in the scuba industry, no matter what you do, equipment, uh, education, dive shop owners, uh, whatever you do, working together to keep our very, very small industry, if you compare it to like surfing or something, yeah. um, keep it alive. We have to work together and not fight each other because that just that just harms the market. Yeah. And the more divers are educated worldwide, the better it is for us because the more potential customers you end up having, yeah. right? Yeah. No, that's definitely a huge point. Um, uh, I actually wanted to ask you if you want to create a social media account for women, SSI women in diving, for example. You know, so it's... Um, um, we should share our stories. We should um, like, um, like the way I did now for Ben, you know, like we should really put fingers on um, other diving centers so that they, uh, and help them to succeed because we all had now really, really difficult times. I don't think that any of us ever expected to, to have these challenges. Um, so we need to work together. And um, I found that SSI really, really, did a lot for all of us to, to get through this um, difficult times. And um, now it's on us diving centers to um, build a better community. And we have tools for this as well. Like mm -hmm. social media is just there and we could just use it um, a bit more. Yeah. 100%. And uh, for anyone out there that is getting into diving, that is diving with us at SSI, doing your training, starting out doing your open water or becoming instructor, make sure if you post on Instagram to also tag us. We're super happy to very often share. I mean, we don't always share every post, obviously, yeah. but we yeah. try to really support our communities and share on our social channels and try to invite people on our social channels so we can give a look into real life of diving and the real experience, which we're really excited about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So always and tag us as at SSI at SSI inter underscore international on Instagram. Yeah, and the same for like customers, you know, like take your diving center um, and um, ask your diving center to take you maybe as well, you know, so just like that yes. we can build up a bigger community. It's, it's just important. 100%. And of course, then if you like your diving center, it's nice if you leave a nice com uh, comment um, and not only bad comments. So. <laughs> And That's I know the thing. <laughs> more like the way we are we are as human beings like when we are not very happy then it's easier for us to leave a bad comment and we are really not like uh leaving good comments but uh, the good comments are actually more important and the bad comments if you write a bad comment think about if it's um like really necessary you know and don't be personal 
personal. This is what I personally don't really like when you get a bad comment and um, they attack you as a person. Um, I find this very, very hurting. And um, I don't think it's necessary, you know. Yeah. So if you don't like my service or whatever, it's absolutely fine. Um, of course, and you could just talk to me. It's also fine. Um, but don't leave um, a hurting comments. It's, mm. you know, it's all over the internet forever and um, you can't do anything and it's really hurting. So yeah. I'm, I am hurt about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, leaving, for example, if you feel like you were in a dive center and something went wrong and you feel like, okay, maybe the world should know about it for whatever reason, make sure to make it feedback rather than a personal complaint exactly. like you said. No, and also, please give me the feedback directly. You know, yeah. I'm every day in the diving center. I'm, I'm, I, I want to know what's going on. And if you're not happy, it's like, maybe I can explain you because maybe your point on seeing these things is, like well I have a different point and maybe I can explain you know and um, or I can also like just like well thank you I did not know this you know so um, it's really it's it's I need to have a feedback otherwise I can't uh, proceed yes. and I can't progress and I can't change so it's like construct uh, constructive feedback is is what we need and I'm, I'm always happy to get a feedback definitely 100% Amazing. So uh, I have a few more personal questions for you now. What <laughs> is your personal favorite diving activity? Is it teaching? Oh. Is it wreck diving? Is well, it so free diving? <laughs> um, well, I think I already said that, that teaching is like really, really rewarding and um, it makes you really, really proud or it makes me really, really proud when um, I finish a course and it doesn't matter if it's like just an introduction into diving thing or if it's like a, uh, an open water or if it's an instructor. Um, yeah, um, teaching um, is, is very, very rewarding, especially when you have like difficult um, people, difficult customers. Um, so which just need a little bit more of you when, when you also like need to look into your self and think about how can you help this person mm -hmm. um so i yeah this is very rewarding and um i like taking pictures as well i i like to see my my underwater creatures and uh, i like to learn from them as well you know so um I think I learned so much about, I don't know, behavior of uh, eagle rays or, you know, whatever, because I'm spending every day of my life with them. And um, this is really, really nice. This like being able to co connect with some, um, with different creatures. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think just this, and if I don't care where I'm diving, you know, <laughs> It doesn't matter if it's a shipwreck or it's a cave or, you know, whatever, diving in general, like mm. perfect. Just the feeling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Is there a diving destination that you still want to see, like this, this dream destination that you've always wanted to see, like that bucket list spot? Mm -hmm. Do you have one of those? Um. Well, I think it's... With the top one. <laughs> it's, like then it's the old world because I don't even have seen that many places. Um, I don't have anything specific, um, actually. So because I'm like happy to see whatever, you know, I don't, I'm happy about every tiny little box fish. And I'm also happy about a, a whale, you know, or a whale shark. Um, so the, actually, there's nothing I would say like, okay, this is something I definitely need to go. You know, I, I hope that um, my daughter is um, not only like working in my diving center, that she will also start working all over the world. And then I just go and visit her all over the world. <laughs> and I just have a look at everything. And that's I my mom's strategy also. <laughs> yeah, it's like, of course. <laughs> that's why I have kids. <laughs> no, um, but I think on every dive site, there's beauty to see, you know, you just need to, to watch out and find it. There's like, you can see something special on every dive site. And if not, then I don't know. So. <laughs> Amazing. And my last question for you today is what is your favorite dive spot in the world? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Of course it's one here in Mauritius. Um, and I'm, 
in between snake reef and um, aquarium. Um, snake reef is a small reef where there's like a huge variety of different uh, species. So which is really, really nice. Uh, perfect for underwater photographers. And at the moment we have um, three uh, rhinoceros there, which is just like, well, my Instagram is full of these. <laughs> <laughs> so they are just amazing, really. And um, Aquarium, Aquarium Big Rock is, is a place where you usually have eagle rays. And I think if it comes to my favorite underwater creature, I have to say it's eagle rays. Um, I just love them. I think they they're so elegant. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, everything else is the same. I also love yeah. octopus. I love uh, every kind of shark. I love uh, whale sharks, obviously. Well, everything. But I think eagle rays. It's um, this elegance and oh my god, they're so divine. You know, they. It's mm. oh my god. Yeah, you see, I'm like oh, eagle rays. <laughs> <laughs> the coolest thing about about eagle rays or even turtles are the same in in my opinion. Is like you are in the craziest current conditions you like fight for your life and they just swim past you exactly. like as exactly. chilled and elegant as they are yeah. well turtles are not really elegant but eagle rays are like yeah. super elegant they, turtles yes. not so elegant but for them it's also like okay, chilled <laughs> i'm really like it's so easy to get against the current here i don't know what what your struggle is yeah and it's i think maybe also the point that they both have a face somehow and um due to this you 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 can connect easy more easily yeah. um and um i don't know like i think that eagle rays have different eye colors as well so i see them with different eye colors and it's just amazing you know so it's really like then you have an eagle ray just here and oh my god you have so dark eyes and oh my god your eyes are not so dark so yeah and um they're also a bit curious and um i like this so mm -hmm. yeah my turtles are great as well. And like I said, every time you stretch and uh, every nudie branch, because they are so colorful and so unbelievable colorful. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, octopus, so super uh, clever and smart. It's wow, great. So yeah, I just, I wish I would see everything more often actually maybe. So like, um, would be cool to have like once per week a whale shark and once per week like I don't know a hammerhead shark just stuff like this. <laughs> would nice to be ju just to be able to call them up and like don't you want to show up today <laughs> I would love being able to do this honestly I think this would be my superpower if I could wish for a superpower just like call them and then like hey could you please pop in and I would like to see you today <laughs> would be amazing for business probably <laughs> yeah this as well yeah yeah Okay, amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to very quickly recap a few of the most important points we discussed today. Uh, Katrina told us so much about being a dive shop owner and her passion of being, in my opinion, an industry leader for females in the diving industry, which is really cool. And if you are even just considering opening a dive shop is just go for it just go for it try it out you don't have to start big you can start small and if you are considering listen to all the great tips that Kat Katrina has given us it's a, it was a really really amazing talk a, uh, thank you so much for joining me uh, thank you everyone for listening live or in the replay again if you have any questions if there's anything unanswered just pop us a comment there and we will answer it. We will answer the comments in the next few days. And if you are interested, the Sea Urchin Dive Center is linked in the Facebook in the post. So you can just click on there and you can get directly in touch with Katrina if you're interested in becoming a, an instructor maybe or going to Mauritius just for diving. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. It was really nice. Okay, then everyone, I will see you next week, Sunday. Uh, we have another great career talk. We're going to talk to a few more instructors, instructor trainers, and all kinds of job opportunities that are out there in the industry will be covered over the next few months. Thank you for listening.